had to receive the announcements before we started. I can't get a bowl. Do you want to get me a bowl? Um, one of these. Pardon? Uh, one of these? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Morning. Morning. Ben said no leaks and everything for I said it's a nice looking up. Uh, yeah. I think it looks better than the Yeah, it does. Dresses it up a lot. You go 
a camp trip. All right, great, great. A lot of things going on. Yes, we do encourage you if you can, those of you that are here, to fill out the registration pads in the view, keep us up to date on anything that's going on that we might need to know of. Also, those of you that may still be watching online, we're glad to have you join us, of course. And, uh, please feel free to send an email or text or whatever means that you prefer to the communication to let us know anything going on in your life. So, um, since it is the first part of July, if you haven't had the opportunity to pick up another room yet, we do have the new up the rooms out, and we encourage you to grab one of those after worship. If you know somebody else that maybe needs one, please feel free to take it and share it with them as well. Any other special announcements? How many on your anniversary? How many on your anniversary?
our um, for our reading this morning. It's all of us to start with. For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. If you will stand and join in hymn number six ninety six, America. Vietnam veteran. He was uh, a patriot for 23 
and a half years, armed, uh, quite patriot. And uh, we should remember his family were. So please remember the family of Neil Barnes. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we rejoice and are grateful that we are able to gather this morning, that we need not fear someone trying to prevent us from gathering and worship. Even more that your Holy Spirit stirs in us the desire to gather and worship. Rejoice and to see, to support and encourage one another, to honor and glorify you, to find the guidance and direction from your word and spirit in the fellowship of the church that will sustain us as we continue to live and serve and rejoice in this day. We do praise you, O God, again for the blessings of freedom and liberty that we enjoy. We praise you this morning for those who have gone before us, 
having mentioned several in our times of sharing, certainly those that are on our prayer list that we know need your healing spirit to rest upon them, to bring physical healing, to strengthen and upgird their spirits for the adversities and challenges that many of them are facing, as well as to find the guidance and direction of life that you are seeking to give them. Father, thank you for the privilege to bring to you those families who have lost loved ones that we lifted up this morning. To know that truly there is nothing better that we can do, even though we certainly do all that we can to minister to friends and neighbors and family, but to entrust souls and the lives of those that we love to your gracious, perfect care. And for families who continue to wrestle with moving forward in loss, to know that they're not alone, that after the gatherings with family, after the worship times, they're not alone. Even though they may be in a physical space by themselves, your spirit is with them. And we know that promise that's so dear to many of us. That even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. Lord, we rejoice that we have the privilege to hold on to those truths. We ask that you would continue to stir in us the joy and the gladness to extend to others the unfailing love of Jesus Christ. And so we are grateful for all that you are doing, for what you have done, especially in the lives of these folks, and what you are doing in our lives, to build us up and to strengthen and to reach those who have yet to know the joy of full salvation. These things and so many more, gracious Father, we live to you in Jesus' precious name, praying as he has taught us as the church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Thank mm-hmm. you.
Our scripture reading today is from Acts 5, verses 1 through 11, and this is the story of Ananias and Sapphira. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's whole, with his wife's whole knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but bought the rest and put it at the apostles. But brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't that belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some, some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet, and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Thank you for your word, Lord. God, our Father, we thank you. We ask that you would move upon our hearts and minds in the power of your Spirit, that we would know how much you value us, how much you value others. The life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, that is that demonstration of absolute truth that I will place upon your creation, upon us as your people. And finally, that we would be excited about the work of your Holy Spirit in our lives, doing what Jesus has promised we would do. And let us always be constantly amazed at how much more you have to reveal and to accomplish. We pray all of this in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, I was reading in one of my promotional guides that I use. I have three main guides that I use typically in my daily devotions and and, and one of them, actually this one here, I've been using on and off since well, the early 1980s, mid-1980s, around 1983 or 84. And so I, I read a lot of the same devotional readings, the scripture accounts, over and again. There's one, one of those stories that... Uh, I was reading a couple weeks ago that it always is fresh, and it, but it's an ancient story. It's, it's a recounting of, from Greek mythology, one of the experiences of Hercules. Some of you that remember a bit of your Greek mythology remember Hercules, the great strong man with a strong spirit. 
Well, there's a story of Hercules on one of his epic journeys meeting a giant by the name of Antaeus. And as they engaged in wrestling, because the giant seemed to have nothing better to do than stand around and wait for people to come by and prevent them from being able to go anywhere, Hercules decided he needed to continue his journey. So he engaged in wrestling with the giant at least at the beginning, found that he really was no match for Antaeus' strength. He might have been more nimble than the giant, but he needed to be able to conquer him to get past him. As they were wrestling, and this wrestling match went on for quite some time, as they were wrestling, it began to become apparent to Hercules there were, there were certain times when Antaeus, the giant, was not as strong as at other times. And eventually, Hercules figured out that it was when the giant wasn't touching the ground. And so, the next thing he did was lift him up and with all of his strength, hold him in the air until the giant weakened to the point that Hercules could bring him into subjection and finish along his journey path. What Hercules didn't know at first, but eventually discovered, was that Antaeus the giant, his mother, in Greek mythology, was Gaia, the Mother Earth. And so every time he would fall upon the Earth, he would be able to renew his strength and rise up with greater strength. But when he was lifted away from the earth, as Hercules eventually did, he lost that source of connection to his strength. Now what I find fresh and new about that, every time I read that account, and I hope that in some way that it speaks to your heart today, is that this is even more so true for us in our relationship with God, in particular the work of the Holy Spirit and our fellowship with the church. That as long as we continue to face the giants in our lives, aware of how big they are, how powerful they are, and continue to wrestle and fight without knowing the means to bring them into subjection. We're going to find ourselves constantly being conquered, always outmatched. But there's provided for us, through the mercy and grace of God, a certain and secure way to receive power that allows us to overcome. So I want to invite you to join with me once again as we share together one of the great creeds of the church. And we'll talk a bit more about that. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In today's scripture account from Acts, and 
as we've been looking at the creed and the three aspects that frame the creed, the, our belief in God, as we know God revealing himself to us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we're focusing in on that third part, the Holy Spirit, God's presence to us revealed in unique and marvelous ways. And we've kind of just been centered around Acts chapter 4 and 5 as we've been looking at this. And we could be looking at lots of different scriptures and doing the same thing. But in particular, I thought that hopefully, as we think about being the church, looking at ways in which the church, as it first was beginning to be led into life and ministry and the joy of this salvation that folks were discovering every day, that that might be the best place for us to be reflecting upon what this means for us. There are a lot of ways in which we can think about the Holy Spirit working in us and probably realistically cannot exhaust the ongoing work of the Spirit because the Spirit of God is always going to be working in our lives. We believe, even before coming to faith in Jesus Christ, in, in our faith tradition, Wesley used to talk about prevenient grace, and some of you probably heard sermons on prevenient grace, and that's a good thing. Uh, that grace which goes before us, in which God is working through the power of the Holy Spirit to get our attention, to woo and to draw us, to bring us to that point where we have the opportunity, we become consciously aware of the opportunity to say yes to Jesus and receive the incredible goodness of God's salvation, His mercy, His love for us. That God has assured us that even though we don't understand, most of the time we're not aware of pre-meeting grace until after coming to faith, God has assured us that He is going to guarantee all humanity the opportunity to experience salvation. And we spend sometimes, probably too much time, trying to figure out how that all happens. And, and it's not wrong to think about those things. But it's kind of like some of our memories. Uh, what, what are, when you think about the Fourth of July, what are some of your strongest memories, especially as you were growing up? Sam kind of triggered this in my mind last week in a comment that he made as we were visiting after worship. One of my strongest memories as a young boy, as a teenager, was bailing straw. Because it was not unusual that we would bail some straw on the 4th of July. That was about the time that we'd gotten the wheat cut. Once the wheat and the oats were cut, it was time to bail the straw and put it up for the winter, for bedding, for the hogs, and for the cattle. We, we, I don't want to suggest that we never had any time to play. Usually we'd work till around noon on the 4th of July and, and then get cleaned up and make our way to Henry, which was the place that had the big 4th of July celebration in Marshall County, and still I think it does. Great place to go to watch fireworks, sitting along the riverbank up on the hill. But thinking about that recollection, why was that so important? Well, I suppose it's because even though I was like any kid, I probably would much prefer to have a day free to goof around, uh, play all day. There, there are just those things that sometimes we need to be guided and directed in what's needing to be done at the time that it needs to be done. But I didn't understand that. I wasn't in the position as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old, to, to set the course for the day. Now, of course, I could have filled my day up. But as far as determining what really is best and how to use this day, let alone how it is we can be living our lives, 
one of the things that becomes clear to us is kind of like in that old story of Hercules. We need to discover power or means of dealing with power that we struggle with that allows us to overcome. And God has made available to us through the promise of Jesus Christ, His assurance, the work of His Holy Spirit to strengthen, sustain, guide, direct, show us what needs to be done today, literally, yes. And even if we're not sure about, I'm not a person that makes up big long lists of every day's events and what I've got planned for the next week or the next month or the next year. But even if you're not, we can be certain that God's Spirit's going to be working in our lives. Yet there is that need for us to become desirous to be open to, to seek that. The account in Acts shows us maybe from the backside, but it's not entirely from the backside. Why that's so significant? It, it's easy to kind of focus on the negative things in this account because it is kind of unsettling. Think about Ananias and Sapphira. But you have to back up again just a few verses and remember what's going on in the life of the church as people are coming to know Jesus Christ. As folks are receiving the empowerment of God's Holy Spirit to begin to live as followers of Christ, beginning to love and care for one another and to embrace the call upon their lives to be sharing this incredibly wonderful news of Jesus Christ with the kids who stop by to play in the backyard with their kids? Really? I mean, that, that surely was going on. Because one of the things that you read when you read the accounts and Acts is these accounts of, and it mentions emphatically whole households. So that meant the kids were involved too. So we should never diminish the importance of those opportunities to witness and to share the love of Christ. Even when somebody stops by to spend some time with the kids or the grandkids. But as the church was embracing this wonderful new life purpose that they were discovering, they began to offer themselves more freely and fully to what they knew God was making available. And so one of the things that began to happen was folks realized that they had some resources to share with the church. This church has had folks over the centuries who've been gracious enough to some time or another in their life to realize they have some resources to share with the church. And so they've chosen to do that. Not just the financial, even though that's part of what the text here is talking about. Investing their time, their talent, their uh, offering of themselves, literally, in their service and their witness. And so we find that in this text, after the example of this happening, Ananias and Sapphira, they, you know, maybe we could do that. But for some reason, we don't know all backstory, but it doesn't take a great deal of imagination. For some reason, Ananias and Sapphira were tempted. Well, why don't you give a gift, get the public recognition, but you don't keep some for yourself. After all, you deserve it. And so that's what they did. And it's interesting to Pay clear attention to what's being said here. As they're confronted for this sin, this lying to the church, coming down from the floor of the body and saying, I want to give you all everything I have. Here's a million dollars. Even though I've kept two million that you don't know about. 
And I'm never going to tell you, but I want you all to take on the best things in sliced bread anyway. Lying to God, lying to the Spirit, Peter confronts them. For, for whatever reason, God revealed to Peter, through the Holy Spirit, what was really going on. And one of the things that makes this account important is that one of the things that we see throughout the Scriptures, beginning way back, way back in the beginning of the Scriptures, and all throughout, is that God values the importance of the life of the community, the people of God. And whenever one person or a few folks decide to step out of faithfulness and obedience to God and deceptively go off in a different direction, even though they may have the right and the freedom to do that, at some point in time when it becomes dangerous to the life of the community, God is going to be. Now, we would usually don't understand why it all happens, when it happens, and how it happens, but we can see enough of the signposts understand that God is acting. And that's what was going on in this town of Acts. For whatever reasons, the deception, the misleading, the, the want of recognition and celebration without faithfulness, there was danger to the life of the community of faith. So God acted, but called these folks to the truth. Why are you lying to the Spirit? Think about, with me for just a moment, think about our own treasured freedoms and independence. Uh, you could spend literally hours, as most of you know, maybe some of you know better than I do, thinking and, and making accounts of how it is that we came to be the people that are thankful and rejoice that being able to be privileged to be citizens of the United States of America. We know, though, that there were various times, signposts, if you will, along the way, where groups of people had the opportunities presented to them, sometimes not necessarily a positive opportunity. For some folks, it was like it was for part of my native heritage on my eternal side. Yeah, you can either leave Scotland or we'll kill you. We'll put you in prison. You know, well, that's a great opportunity. I think I'll risk my life and sail across the Atlantic. Well, it is a better opportunity than the alternative. And there were many of those kinds of instances. We know just from our recollections of history, those groups that out of religious persecution, were seeking a place for them to be able to gather and worship as they treasured and wanted, and, and so they made their way here. And so all of these different signposts that we have, even though we may not understand everything that was going on in every single person's life that led them to this place, and still is going on, as folks are seeking to experience this privileged opportunity of being citizens of this nation. What we do know is that God is working in the lives of people. And as God was working in the lives of these people, those times when there was deception, even though it maybe wasn't always flushed out initially, those times when there was danger, those times when there was lack of preparedness, those times when there was threat and harm, and so many different instances throughout our nation's history when we recall threat and harm and danger. As we look back, we see that God was working in mysterious and marvelous ways. Ways that weren't always clear to the folks who were living in that moment. Even though to some, they began to see the stories and the leadership of God. And without making too light of this, it is simply 
true this way, but it's because folks were constantly seeking to be aware of the work of God's Spirit. Wooing and guiding and leading them. And as they did this, they recognized that God's Spirit, as mysterious, as strange, some folks might use that word, unnerving at times, Almost unbelievable at times. God's Spirit, though, never will call us or lead us to do anything that's contrary to our Lord Jesus Christ and what we have already revealed in God's Word to us and the life of the faith community. So when we say that we believe in the Holy Spirit, we believe in the ongoing work of God that goes back beyond our understanding of time. But yet we know it because it's flashed out in the universe. We believe in the salvation and the work of God to bring redemption and restoration and healing and forgiveness to every human being. Not because we understand why it is that some folks do or don't respond, but because we know what Jesus Christ has done. That this is available to all. We believe, as Jesus has promised it, that there is a stirring, empowering presence of God with us that is always seeking to perfect and to guide and strengthen us in the living of this life in a way that brings us to the fulfillment of the kingdom of God and the completion of our purpose, as well as continues to fulfill the purpose of the kingdom of God on this earth today. God's Spirit is working among us. What is God's Spirit inviting us to today? What is God calling us to today? Well, if they're strong on the ground, I suppose it's the fatal strong. If the grandkids in the house, I suppose it's to have fun with them, to feed them, and talk with them when you can about Jesus. If there's friends or neighbors who have a loved one die or get sick, then it's probably somehow going to be about offering presence. Presence and peace and comfort to someone who loves and cares. God's Spirit is faithful. And if we get distracted, if we fall down, even though none of us probably likes to fall down, spirit is that strength that we do not fear failure, because the spirit will strengthen and lift us up. Continue to live as Jesus Christ has made possible. Today we have the incredible privilege of celebrating the freedom to come and to ask God's presence through the sacrament that Jesus has brought. To meet our needs, to strengthen us, to heal us, forgive us, to do whatever it is that we need personally, God do so that we all can be the people of God together, living for Christ Jesus. Gracious God, reveal to us in the power of the Spirit right now what it is that you are wanting to grant to us. An awareness of something maybe that we need to confess to you can help us, Lord, to do so. An awareness of great gift that you've placed before us, that you're wanting us to take up and to allow you to work a wondrous new thing in our lives today. Perhaps that unfailing love of Jesus Christ, that no matter where we go or what we experience, will sustain us as we journey with Jesus. Lord, work in us today that which we need so that we can exalt you, 
lift you up and that folks would always have the opportunity to see Jesus in us. These things we pray in His precious name. Join with me in our celebration of the sacrament. You can either follow along on the screen or in your hymnal. Lord, be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks on to the Lord. It is me, right? So it is. It is me, right? Our bounden duty that we should at all times and all places give thanks to God, who is our Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels on this day of celebration of all the wondrous gifts, the precious freedom we enjoy. With this day of life that's before us and all that may yet happen to we simply offer ourselves to you, O God. That with all the company of heaven, we might give glory to you, God, and magnify your name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in your tender mercy, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered death upon the cross for our redemption. Jesus made there, by the one offering of himself, a full, perfect, and su sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And he did institute and command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly ask you and bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit. These your gifts of bread and the cup, that we receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature of the In the same night, that Jesus was betrayed. He took bread. When he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and he said to them, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and he said, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. Let us pray. O Lord, our heavenly Father, we thy humble servants desire thy Father the goodness. Mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly we seek to thee to grant that by the merits of death of thy Son Jesus Christ, that through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins, and all the benefits of this path. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. I'm going to be seeking me that all of you who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we be seeking thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not waiting on our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table of merciful work, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy hand that we bring mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the promises of thy people, 
But now I have to sing for it, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us that therefore gracious Lord, so to partake of the sacraments of thy Son Jesus Christ, that we may walk in the of life, may grow into his likeness, and may our Lord dwell in him and be in us. Body of Christ broken for us, blood of Christ shed for us. Receive and give thanks. Let us praise God.
Even though it's nice to have good equipment. The champion stock car racer, even always the one who has the fastest car, as Kyle Larson showed last week, by having more gas than everybody else. But they are all connected to the source of power and wisdom and guidance that directs and leads them. And so are you. In the name of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we have the power of God to guide and lead us. So let us be sure to draw upon and be open to that power and be filled and strengthened for what it is God has for us today, each day. Let's build peace. Amen.